from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, Devin Gannett. Well, hi there, and thanks for stopping by for episode 131 of the evidence. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X 3D. And, you know, one of the things that's been uh, kind of splashing around the internet for the last month or so has been the supposed uh, uh, crash of a rocket into the moon. Now, it, of course, did occur, but here's a video that everyone is saying proves it. You'll see it entering from the upper right, a bright white spot, rocketing along at tremendous speed, and uh, it gets closer and closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, boom! And we have this gigantic mushroom cloud erupting from the surface of the moon. And we'll just watch that for another moment or two and uh, notice that it dissipates and we're done. So, pretty cool, huh? But let me point out a couple problems with this video. First of all, for those of you with the eyes to see, it of course is CGI. That uh, so-called rocket streaking in from the upper right, first of all, to be visible in daylight, would have to be intensely bright. Also, the vehicle itself would have to be maybe mm, 60 to 100 miles wide or long, rather, and maybe mm, 20, 30 miles across. That's uh, stretching the imagination a little bit. And then when it hits the uh, surface of the moon, well, we have this beautiful mushroom cloud that is actually two or three hundred miles tall. If you compare the uh, uh, diameter of the moon, what is it, 2159 miles in diameter? Well, that's uh, at least a quarter of that di diameter, maybe more. And uh, then you also notice that there was uh, a, a mushroom cloud that showed convection effects, what you would expect to see on Earth. Whoever created the CGI didn't take into account the zero gravity and vacuum of space and that the cloud would not propagate in that fashion. So, a nice fake, but eh, not so much. It did happen. There are probably some good sources you can go to. One of the other things that uh, we've been looking at this past week is the so-called noodle that showed up uh, in a recent Perseverance uh, Zcam. And we're going to take a closer look at that in X3D in just a moment. And by the way, if you don't already know X3D, go down below in the description, click the link, learn how to do it in a couple of minutes, and join the thousands of us who regularly go to the surface of Mars and view everything in full stereoscopic 3D with no equipment to buy and no particular effort involved. And remember, you're seeing in 3D already. If you have normal 3D vision, you see 3D from the moment you're opening your eyes all day long until you close your eyes at night. So, pretty cool. Easy to learn. Let's dive in. As we uh, dive right into NASA's noodle, well, as you look at this in X3D, it's really wonky inside the circle there. What happened? Well, what likely happened is that there was some wind that blew the strands of the uh, noodle between exposures and uh, thus resulted in the uh, wonky 3D you see here. Or it could be uh, manipulation of the image by NASA. We really don't know. I've gone in and adjusted the contrast and uh, fiddled with the parallax so that this appears more like it would if you were standing over it and taking a look down at your feet. So what do you think? Is this a, a noodle? Is it a P-51 
piece of string or binding from the Perseverance rover? Or is it something organic? Well, let's take one more closer look at it before we uh, move on. You know, I have uh, confirmation bias just as much as you do, and uh, I would love for this, whatever it is, to be native to Mars. It would be quite a discovery. But you know, as long as we have a plausible explanation for it, that is that it originated with the uh, a binding or other material with the Perseverance rover, well, we have to apply Occam's razor and move on. This one caught my eye in uh, Neil's GMAC of uh, Curiosity 3331. Let me show you why. The most obvious thing about this is that wall section, what appears to be a wall section that I'm pointing out with the arrow here. Now, is that just an oogie, an object of geological interest? Well, it could be, except for this. Look at this beautiful square-ended block in front and to the right. Is that by chance? Well, you've heard me say before that if you find an anomaly, normally there are several others around it. And I'll bet you, you've already found the other one. And that, of course, is this beautifully rounded piece off to the left. And, uh, and it does appear to have what, oh, what could be a staircase cut into it. Uh, here's the thing. When you find three non-fractal anomalies in close proximity to each other, that eliminates the object of geological interest classification. These are artifacts. Here's an interesting one from Nev's GMAC of Percy 489, and it was pointed out by what I call an avatar. Now, these are people who use made-up screen names, and that's okay. I understand why people do that. But unless you use a name that I recognize, uh, you know, instead of some something like Thunder God or whatever it is, uh, you're just going to be called an avatar. And I won't take credit for it, but I will point it out. You can click the link below, and it'll take you right to it. Anyway, pretty strange. Let's have a look. Now we look inside the box and see a squarish item with what appear to be holes along the top edge, rounded area to the right and what appears to be a mirror edge, a highly reflective edge on the top left. Let's move in a little closer. Let's do a quick inventory. Lower left, you have a split or a cut. And if you follow that cut, you'll see radial extensions going across the front surface. And of course, we have that brilliant reflective edge, dead straight, dead even, and then we have four holes down below. Off to the right, a perfectly curved and radiused extension that appears to be part of the same piece. And again, it seems that this does not match the geology surrounding it. So it's not quite non-fractal enough for me to classify it as an artifact, but I will call it an artifact candidate. Rami always seems to find uh, remarkable little items, and this is one he's calling a shock absorber. Obviously, on the left side, it's almost cubical in nature, perfect 90-degree angles in three dimensions, and the entire aspect of the main body is straight as an arrow, but uh, who, who knows what the rest of that is covering it. Mud fossil, maybe? But on the right side, we see what might be a, a kind of a ring right at the base and then an eyelet, similar to what you'd find in a shock absorber. 
If you want more of Rami, just check out his link below. He has hundreds of terrific anomalies just ready for your eyeballs. Of course, they're flat. They're not 3D, but uh, they're worth having a look. Here's something I found in Neil Spence GMAC of uh, 409 Percy. And there it is inside the yellow target. Something round and maybe about four or five feet in diameter. And look off in the distance there inside the red circle. Is that something in the sky? Well, it might be. Uh, it might be dirt on the lens, although it wouldn't have such a 3D aspect to it. Uh, and it doesn't look like much when you blow it up. I'm inclined to think it's dirt, but it is fascinating that it's way out there in the background and up in the sky. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I see a wheel half buried in the sand. And look at those straight elements going across it and then the smaller wheel right in the center with a cross piece and what might be gearing illuminated by the sun very very strange let's move in have a closer look you tell me is this natural as far as i'm concerned this is a straight up artifact here is yet another pyramidium, or what we call a, a capstone that uh, would grace the top of a, a pyramid or an obelisk. We have found so many of these on the surface of Mars, and here's another one that uh, Percy turned up in 402. Once again, we have those wonderful 4K high-resolution full-color stereo cameras of Percy's Z cam and they don't even begin to match the quality of the cell phone in your pocket. Regardless, here it is, easy to see, clear, non-fractal angles, with a circle carved into the left side. And while we're on the subject of pyramidiums, let's wrap things up with something Rami found. Hard to classify this. It sure does seem to have non-fractal angles and that spade-shaped bit on the front. Who knows? This is from Spirit. It's an old one. And uh, this is a one that when you click on the link it leads you to a 360 uh, panorama that Nev did that's just spectacular. In fact, I'm going to be going back and checking that out in detail myself. You know, if you saw something you liked, please give a thumbs up. It only takes a second, and it really does help the channel out. Please consider joining this channel. It doesn't cost much at all, just pennies, and it helps support this work going forward and keeping all those really irritating ads out of your eyes. And uh, something to show me? Email me down below. Meanwhile, for all you proud weirdos out there, you know who you are. Stay safe. And stay weird. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D. Be well.